Okay, so welcome to this lesson uh, on ICT future topics. And today we're going to be looking at SpaceX to understand what SpaceX have achieved, how ICT is central to this vision, and what they hope to next achieve. Okay, so uh, as usual, we've got your numeracy and literacy tasks to complete. And the keyword for today is reusable rockets, which is what is central to SpaceX is what they're based upon. The idea that you can reuse your rockets, which gets you into space or into orbit a lot, lot cheaper, which will open up a whole world of new and different things that you can do. Um, that picture you've got there is a real picture, believe it or not. It looks like it should be photoshopped, but no, that is a real picture. That is SpaceX on a test mission put an astronaut dummy in a car, a Tesla car, because they're owned by the same guy, Elon Musk, uh, and put it into orbit and take a picture. Um, yeah, good way to test your space rockets. So let's have a quick look. So to understand this, you need to understand a little bit about the, the man behind the whole thing. And that's Elon Musk. He, he helped create, uh, he's one of the programmers behind a online payment system called PayPal. And he sold it, or they sold it, to eBay, and he made millions out of it. With this money, he created a few more companies. He actually created quite a few different companies, one called the Boring Company, which is not boring. It's actually quite interesting. They're trying to dig lots of tunnels and make tunneling a lot quicker, a lot faster, which could change transport. Um, he's got ownership of a solar power company in California, I believe. Um, and he's got Tesla, the motor car company, makes electric motor cars, and SpaceX, which is the focus of today. So SpaceX, and his dream is this, basically, and, and this is actually SpaceX's mission statement. It is, we want to build a colony on Mars, right? No, you know, pretty, uh, pretty big, bold statement there. They want to put people on Mars and keep them there, create a community of human beings living on the surface of Mars to create real-life Martians, which is... Pretty cool, to be fair. Um, and so that's what they're trying to do. And they're pretty, you know, they've, they've come pretty far, pretty fast, really. So they've developed new technologies like the reusable Falcon rocket, um, which has allowed them to put people and things into orbit much cheaper than anyone else could. And one of their big customers is now NASA. Okay, NASA in a complete reversal of how they used to do things um, are no longer building their own rockets for the purposes of getting into orbit. They are still building a rocket to try and get to the moon again, but they are the smaller rockets that get you into orbit. NASA aren't building anymore. SpaceX are building them for NASA. Okay, um, there's another company as well, uh, Blue Origin. I believe they're called, uh, who should be testing that fairly soon. But SpaceX, you've probably heard of the news recently, have had huge success because they've just put two human beings into the into orbit and got them onto the International Space Station. It's the first time in human history that a private company has ever got humans uh, into space aboard their own rocket and docked with a space station. That's pretty impressive stuff. Normally only governments can afford that kind of stuff. But SpaceX have proven that a private company can do it and they can do it a lot cheaper than anyone else. Right. Um, let's change that slide. Facial recognition data set. Wrong, wrong uh, keywords. Right. So here we need to do. There is a 10 minute or 10 minute and 44 second video attached to this slide. You need to watch that before you continue the rest of the lesson. Okay, because that will explain to you how the Falcon reusable rocket was developed, the ICT that was required to make it work, because it's not an easy thing to do. Um, and I would like you to so answer those questions for me as you go. So question number one, what was the grasshopper? Okay, what is a grasshopper? It will tell you in the video. It's not a little animal, it's not a little bug. Tell me what it is. Tell me how it helped. Uh, tell me how many key technologies did SpaceX have to develop in order to get their rocket to take off and then land again and then be ready to reuse. And I want you to describe in detail one of those key technologies, write for me about 40 to 60 words in so doing. Okay? So that's that task. Go away, watch it. So if you're watching this video, stop it, go away, watch this, 
and then come back. I can wait. Okay, I assume you've watched it. Good stuff. So, next question for you then. Having just seen how they can reduce the cost of spaceflight and the sort of things this could open up, I want you just to do a little bit of uh, see how good you are at reading tables and, uh, and charts here. Here you can see the costs of the different types of spacecraft per person to get into orbit. Starting off with Mercury, which was NASA's first spacecraft, and then Gemini, which is what they built upon. Um, you got the Russian Soyuz rocket, you got the NASA Space Shuttle, SpaceX's Dragon, and Boeing are doing to build something called the Starliner. Um, that's not ready yet. The Starliner has not been finished. So I want you to try and think, answer this question. Which vehicle is the cheapest to use to get one person into orbit? What is the overall trend in the cost per seat? Okay, so our costs coming up or our costs going down? And what is the cheapest vehicle that you could use to get into orbit? Okay, this table comes from The Economist, but they've got their information from both NASA and the Planetary Society. Planetary Society, guys and girls, is extremely cool. Check them out online. They are a organization based in America that campaign for space issues. They try and convince the US government that spending more money on space science and space flight is worth doing. They've got a fascinating website, fascinating um, blogs and uh, podcasts you can listen to, really worth checking out. If you're, interested, if you're into your space science, you need to become a member of the Planetary Society or at least listen to their, their blogs and podcasts because they're really good. Okay. So all this has been about getting what we've called cheap orbital access. But the question I want to ask you is why? Why is that so important to be able to get from the ground, to get from Earth, up into Earth orbit, up into, into space circling the Earth? Why is that the challenge? Well, because that's the hardest bit. You use more energy getting from Earth into the orbit than you do from orbit to then to the moon which is a far greater distance. Why is that? Think about it. Why is it difficult to get off the Earth? Because of gravity, right? So using all that rocket fuel, all that energy to get yourself up and out of the Earth's gravity is the real challenge. Once you've done that and you're in orbit, the rest of it is quite straightforward in terms of energy use because you just, there's no resistance in space. And if you've broken away from Earth's gravity, What's stopping you? Literally nothing is stopping you. Okay, you can just go in that direction. As long as you've got your timings right and got your angles right, you'll eventually hit your target. Okay, obviously, the bigger the engine you've got, the faster you can go. But there is quite literally nothing stopping you. Right, I just want to talk to you about this then, just to get your head around this idea of how important it is to get from the Earth to orbit. Science fiction have long talked about something called the space elevator, right? You can see a picture of a, a mock-up here, right? It would literally be like an elevator in a mall or a lift in a mall. But rather than going up two stories or three stories in the mall, this thing would go from Earth to space, which is bonkers, right? It doesn't make much sense. This thing would be, top of my head, I couldn't even tell you how many kilometers it is from the Earth to, to orbit. Um, let's make up some numbers, 10,000. Be more than that, 10,000, that's like way more than that. Anyway, pretty big tower to get yourself into space. Um, but if you could do it, and they think maybe you can do it by using things like nano fibers, nano materials, I don't really know, people that are far more clever, far smarter than I am, um, will be able to tell you that, ask your science teacher. Um, but they think that is potentially possible in the future to make a material that is so strong that you could use it to create a space elevator. Then you could just basically hop on it and go up and down it to get into space. And if you could do that and basically make the cost of getting into space almost nothing, then you've just opened up the galaxy, the solar system, okay? 
Um, so that's that's key. SpaceX haven't built an elevator, but they've done the next best thing, which is building a reusable rocket, which means you can get into space quickly and cheaply. Um, so, right, optional challenge, okay, space tourism, one of the th big things that could be driving this, uh, these businesses and this scientific development to get low Earth orbit or Earth orbit um, technologies in, uh, in place is space tourism. There's a good film here from The Economist. Have a watch, answer those questions. This is your challenge task. And then I want everyone to have a go at this, okay? Give me a point, evidence, explain, paragraph. Why is cheap orbital access so important? What does it allow you to do? And why is it difficult to achieve? All right, think about those things, have a go. And there is a quiz to do at the usual place, okay? Let's do that quiz, screenshot it, send it to your uh, teacher or type in your teacher's email address and the results will go to them. Okay, hope that helps. And yeah, Elon Musk we trust.